I'm a man of substance. Because I'm the workmanship of God in Christ Jesus. I am excellent. Because I am the workmanship of God in Christ Jesus. I confess. I'm a joint heir with Christ. The world is mine. I declare that all things are mine. Listen. God Almighty performed the miracle. With Moses' rod. He turned into a serpent. And Pharaoh said, is this what your God can do? <laughs> he called his magicians. And his magicians came. The Bible says that the magicians of Egypt cast their rods on the ground. And they all turned into serpents. The Bible doesn't say they, that there was a trick. There was no trick. Oh, we're not talking about some of the magicians we have today that do... <laughs> you know. And you know, the, it's a trick. And everybody's trying to look for the trick. This was no trick. They cast the rods down and they turned into serpents before Pharaoh and before Moses and Aaron. How could they have done it? Didn't you hear what he called them? These were sorcerers. Go back to that scripture. Go back to that verse. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. These were the magicians. These were people who dealt to the spirit realm. These were people who conjured spirits. They related with spirits. They understood the forces of darkness. And they performed signs and wonders. Exactly like God did. The difference was, okay, next verse. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Now, I want you to notice, he didn't say, but Aaron's serpent swallowed up their serpents. He said Aaron's rod, reminding us, that it was a rod that turned into a serpent. Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. So God showed his bigness. But what, what I wanted you to notice is that these magicians did the same thing. You want to convince people that God raised Jesus from the dead without the miraculous and the supernatural? You must be kidding. Can you see why? We must have the supernatural. Otherwise, Christianity is another dead religion. But praise God, we have it. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have it. I mean, look, 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 look at that. God knew it would work. God knew they were going to do the same thing. But he's training Moses about the supernatural life. Look at Jesus. Let me show you something about Jesus. You ready for this? St. John's Gospel, chapter 2. Let's read from verse 1. St. John, chapter 2, from verse 1. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. And Jesus said unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. His mother says to the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Oh boy, I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm moving too fast for you now. You know, here we're beginning to deal with something. Mysteries for the manifestations of God's power. There are mysteries that if any man 
would understand those mysteries and apply them it will bring an end to misery look at that his mother said say it unto the servants whatsoever he saith unto you do it so, you know sometimes in life you, you just want to see a miracle. You need a miracle. But are you ready to do whatever he says to you? This was going to be a risky business. We'll see it in a second. Okay. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever, whatsoever he said unto you, do it. Now watch this. They have no wine. There's a lot of people. The wine is finished. But there's a lot of people. So, Mary, the mother of Jesus, comes to him and says, they have no wine. And the response of Jesus wasn't that encouraging anyway. But then she turns to the servants and says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. She knew it would work. Let's see. Next verse. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. That's about um, ten gallons for uh, one firkin. And if the two or three, that's twenty gallons or thirty gallons. Okay? Now imagine this. The Bible says these water pots were for the purifying. That means that the water pots that uh, for washing your feet when you came into the place. So it's dirty water. Okay? Like dish water. So it's not clean water. It's not for drinking. It's water at the door. You wash, wash your hands, your face, then you go inside. Now, these are the, these are the, containers outside <laughs> then next verse Jesus said unto them to the servants fill the water pots with water fill them and they filled them up to the brim and he said unto them draw out now and take it to the governor of the feast take it to the master of ceremony <laughs> and they took it now, this is risky. <laughs> because you know where this water is coming from. This is not, nobody is supposed to drink this thing. Now, let's see the next verse. And when the ruler of the feast, the master of ceremony, had tasted the water that was made wine, now we are told it was made wine, and knew not whence it was. Didn't know where it came from. Look at what's in parenthesis. But the servants which drew the water knew. <laughs> Can you see it? That's to let us know that it was something very serious about where that water came from. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom. The celebrant. He says, hey. Said unto him, every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. He says, you know, at the beginning of a party, they bring all the good wine. When people are drunk and have forgotten themselves, they now bring, there's no more wine, they bring the bad one. He says, but you do it differently. You, you are so nice. <laughs> he says, you have kept the good wine until now. You reserve the good one till the end of the party. Wow. <laughs> Next verse. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. And his disciples believed on him because disciples were there. So the Bible says it was a miracle. He turned water, dish water, into wine. I'll never be broken in my life. Amen. He turned.
turn this water into wine. It's about where you live. It's about living in the spirit. Beyond time and space. That's what this is about. Hallelujah. My goodness. How could I walk in luck? How could I understand the supernatural and walk in luck? I refuse to lack. Say it again. I refuse to lack. Never. 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 Mm -hmm. Let me show you something. St. John chapter 14, verse 21. Now we're talking about secrets, you know, mysteries for the manifestation. Look at this. He that hath my commandment, these are the words of Jesus. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. He says, if you will love him, keep his word. His father will love you. And guess what? I will love him and will manifest myself to him. The secret is in loving the Lord. He will manifest himself to you. You want him to show up in your life. You want him to manifest himself, manifest his glory in your life. It's the love of the Lord. That's where the secret is. And whatever he tells you to do, do it. It's there. He says, he that loveth me. He says, he that hath my commandments and keep it there. You do what I tell you? He says, that's the one who loves me. You prove your love by doing his word. And the father will love you. And Jesus will manifest himself to you. He'll manifest himself in your job. He'll manifest himself in your business. He'll manifest himself in your finances. He'll manifest himself in your body. He'll manifest himself to you. You'll see his glory in your life. It's just, it's this simple. 